Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gary Strong and I'm the Global Building Standards Director at the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors and the Head of Fire Safety. And so today I'm going to introduce to you the International Fire Safety Standards Coalition and the work that we've been doing uh, since 2018, since the coalition was first formed. And tell you a little bit about the um, common principles, the standards we've published and also the Global Decade of Action for Fire Safety 2022 to 2032 which has just recently been presented to the UN. So just to start off with, and you probably know this anyway, the science of fire knows no geographical or political boundaries. A fire is a fire wherever it happens in the world. But unfortunately, what we do have is different standards that exist in different countries. And in some countries, unfortunately, there are no standards or no codes that exist. And that's the aim of the coalition is to try and improve and uplift fire safety around the world. And some context around this in particular is that we have roughly 3 million fires per annum, and that's only the fires that get counted, 7 million injuries, 150,000 deaths per annum, and nearly $350 billion in terms of cost, roughly 1% to 2% GDP cost per annum related to fires. You'll also know about climate change wildfire uh, increasing, and also the population increasing, predicted to be up to 9 billion by 2050. So therefore, there will be an increased urban population, and therefore the risk of fire um, is going to, we think, is going to increase. Just to touch on wildfires, because it's been in the news so much recently over the past couple of years, wildfires are increasingly threatening the wildland urban interface, as we call it, and how we design and manage buildings at that interface is really important, but also how we manage wildfires as well. International standards that currently exist for things like uh, international valuation standards, uh, financial reporting standards, etc., are equally as important as international fire safety standards. And so what a lot of people forget about in the design, construction, the management of buildings and infrastructure is how this plays out with the international lending community and with valuers as well. So valuation can be at the heart of assets. Um, as well as obviously with the occupation and how we measure buildings uh, and how we uh, report on that. So international fire safety standards is the thing I'm going to tell you about today. The coalition was formed and launched at the, uh, the United Nations in Geneva in July 2018. And there was a small group of about 20 of us who came together with the support of the UN uh, to launch the coalition after the Grenfell Tower fire back in June 2017. When we reached out to other countries and realized that actually there was a big issue in terms of the consistency of standards in fire safety that that exist around the world and as i say in some countries there are no standards and what we could do to try and raise that level of fire safety increase the regulatory frameworks and professionalism competence around the world dealing with fire safety this also plays into the United Nations uh, SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, particularly uh, SDG 11 and also 3 and 13. So this plays to the, the United Nations in particular. That's why one of the reasons they're supporting our work and also for other organizations such as the World Bank. The common principles were the first standards which we published uh, through the coalition, published in uh, 2020. And it took a lot of collaboration around the world to, to bring this together. And these common principles sit above the, the law, the codes and regulations and standards that may exist in a country, but start off with these very high level principles of prevention, detection and communication, occupant protection, containment and extinguishment. And we thought we'd start with those high level principles because those are the sort of things that nobody could really object to. Object to. And then we'd move down into the more perhaps uh, detail around some of this. So the common principles are applied at the stages of design, construction, uh, occupation, any change in the building, change in use, and then finally at demolition, which is often overlooked as well, how fire safety is important at all stages of the property life cycle. The first one, prevention principle, is, is fairly simple, as it says on the slide there, and it has three goals of life safety from fire, building damage prevention as well, which is often overlooked in, in national codes, and also then protection of operations as well, which is equally important to businesses. The detection and com communication principle is really important in terms of the, the goals of communicating amongst relevant stakeholders, 
communication between systems and automatically detection and alarming of smoke and fire as well. Occupant protection principle, uh, facilitating occupant avoidance of an escape from the effects of fire, we think is a really important principle there uh, and enabling the safe movement of occupants to a safe location and the time and opportunity to reach a place of safety before being adversely affected by the products of combustion. That's, of course, assuming that they do need to move. And, of course, you'll be aware of the, the stay put principle, which still may be applicable in certain circumstances, but, of course, has been fairly controversial uh, in the UK uh, as a result of the Grenfell Tower fire. The containment principle is about limiting the fire and its consequences to as small an area as possible. In other words, containing it in the compartment, the room of origin. Um, and that can be achieved through a number of different strategies, which you will be aware of, including compartmentation, smoke control, fixed firefighting systems, structural integrity, and controlling the smoke as well, particularly the smoke, which I think everybody is now realizing is, is such an issue. And then finally, the extinguishment principle is about suppressing the fire um, and it's always uh, the recommendation that it's done by the fire service. But for smaller fires, the action of extinguishment can be done locally uh, if it's caught quickly enough by occupants if they're trained in the use of, of small fire extinguishers and, and fire blankets and the like. But obviously, the fire service should always be considered as the last line of defence against fire. And extinguishing the fire within the compartment where it originated, uh, hopefully before it, it starts spreading outside of that room of origin. So the, as I say, the International Fire Safety Standards Common Principles were published on the 5th of October. There's the link to the, uh, to the coalition website. They were presented shortly afterwards to the United Nations on the 7th of October, and therefore just shortly afterwards adopted as a UN standard. So it's the first UN standard on international fire safety standards that's ever been published. The RICS, my own organization, also produced an insight paper shortly afterwards on the issue uh, around fire fatalities and injuries data uh, and organizations like CTIF who we've been working with around this um, would recognize I think that data collection on fire fatalities and injuries is not consistent <clears throat> even within different countries such as the UK we, we collect data in different ways um, there is the EU Firestat uh, project which is currently underway uh, sponsored by the European Commission, which has also been looking at this, where that paper has been used as well extensively, and that uh, EU fire step program paper is about to come out as well. So the decade of action for fire safety 2022 to 2032, which was recently launched, has a goal is, is to stabilise and then reduce the forecast level of fire fatalities, injuries, economic cost, and environmental impact around the world by 2032, as global population increases. And also we know that the climate change is, is happening as well. So that's another challenge. So we do think that a decade of action is really important to drive through an e increase in fire safety awareness, um, education, training, increasing resources, uh, and obviously increasing the standards and, and the adoption of standards by governments as well. So that's a really important goal, which we're trying to achieve. There are also, also 15 objectives and around those 15 objectives, 60 individual actions as well, which we've put into the, the paper, the plan, which is, sits up onto the IFSS website. So do please um, do have a look at the, the plan in detail. Within the decade of action, we've broken this down into five pillars. Pillar one is for people. Um, pillar two is around products. Products we know are so important. Uh, pillar three around structures. Pillar four is around the firefighting infrastructure. And lastly, pillar five of community. So within each of those pillars, there are uh, objectives and actions which we think we need to drive forward over the course of the decade of action. The 15 objectives, um, you can see them on the screen, but they are about encouraging countries to adequately resource their national fire safety focus. The Grenfell Tower fire had an impact not just within the UK, but, but globally as well. And a lot of my, my role is about talking to other countries and other governments around the impact of the Grenfell Tower fire, the changes that are coming forward within the UK itself. Uh, but also, I think what we've also realised, a lot of countries weren't particularly focused on fire safety. It wasn't particularly a big issue for them. And all of a sudden, the Grenfell Tower shook that up and made people realise they do need to focus on fire safety. And this is what the Decade of Action is about. It's trying to help 
countries, uh, particularly those with low and middle income countries, where they perhaps need more help than the, um, the high income countries. Having said that, there is still a, a great global inconsistency in the way in which we approach fire safety. So our target is to reduce fire related fatalities and injuries. Uh, it's about improving data collection, monitoring the progress and performance every year and reporting back to the UN how this uh, is taking place. Encouraging increased funding for fire safety, and um, particularly education and training and competence. Uh, developing public messaging, uh, which we also think is important for the public. You know, a lot of people don't really understand fire, don't in understand how quickly a fire can break out and get, a, get out of control, and the means of escape time is reduced. And so we're seeing a lot of the need for public messaging around this. And developing fire safety, fire safe heating and cooking appliances for low and middle income countries in particular, and obviously fire safe building materials and technologies and systems. Uh, and that will continue to evolve and we need to make sure that we are ahead of the, the building materials and technologies and systems that are, are coming forward. So fire safety standards, guidance, all of that will continue to evolve and we, we aim to help countries sharing best practice knowledge that exists in, in many countries where it's quite sophisticated, perhaps not so much in, in other countries. Strengthening management infrastructure, capacities and professionals employed in fire safety. Strengthening the fire service capacity and firefighting infrastructure uh, and developing through regulation uh, support for the fire service and communities in particular. Regulatory frameworks, as was called out in Dame Judith Hackett's report, is really important that the regulatory framework considers and improves on life safety, wild, wild, wildlife fires, and asset preservation as well. And obviously, finally, then fire data and making evidence-based changes to those regulatory frameworks. So what are the next steps? Well, we've already uh, published the Decade of Action for Fire Safety. It was presented to, to the UN. Uh, we've got a global communications group now established uh, and an overarching committee. <clears throat> and if anybody's interested in joining the committee or the five pillar subcommittees, then please reach out to us. This is a global organization. We've got now over 80 professional bodies, such as the RICS and others uh, supporting this. We're all volunteers. We're all doing this in, the, in our own time because we think this is really important to act in the public interest. Um, and as the coalition continues to grow in size, we're getting more people on board as supporters. Those are commercial organizations that also want to support this, uh, this noble venture, which we've established. We will uh, produce an annual report on progress. Um, and that may, might make difficult reading for some countries where perhaps the, um, the fire safety is not so sophisticated, but we want to see and encourage people to, to move forward with, with fire safety. So it's really important that we're not there as, as trying to call out people where they've perhaps have not done anything at all, but it's about trying to encourage and support best practice and guidance and standards that could help them fairly easily and fairly quickly in their own countries. We also invited the UN to, uh, to support this, and so they've warmly welcomed the, the launch of the Decade of Action. It is now working its way through its formal adoption process within the UN, which will take a little while, um, but they are really supportive of this in the same way as they were for the Decade of Action for Road Safety, where we've taken a lot of our cues from. So there are global communications going out via the UN TV, LinkedIn, and Twitter, um, and they are supporting the Decade of Action Committee and also the appointment of a UN Special Envoy for Fire Safety. Uh, in the same way that the road safety campaign had something similar, we think a UN Special Envoy for Fire Safety is important to really spread the message around the world about what it is that's required to improve fire safety uh, and stop those horrific uh, footages that we see on social media and, and on TV um, news programs where catastrophic fires have occurred. We also need to engage, obviously, with national governments and local governments and, and mayors around this as well. And, and that message is really important as we start to build momentum about this. So thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Um, do please get in touch with me at uh, my email address just there on the screen. Uh, if you can in any way support what we're trying to do uh, and with your own network within your own organization uh, to try and spread this, this, uh, the message about what this is about. It's a completely free to join coalition. 
um, but we will continue to publish the standards and improve uh, the uh, translations of standards. We are, have already have a Chinese translation up on the website, and we're now starting to look at a French translation, a Spanish and a Portuguese translation for, for Brazil, for example. So um, please do help us, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you.